Hey folks, it's John with KGTropicals.com here for episode 7 of our video series KG Q&A where we're answering your questions that you send to that email address right there. You want to get your questions answered, send them in. It might take me a while, I've got 99 questions in reserve here. So I'm going to try to hit 4 or 5 of them in each episode uh, so it won't take too long. I'm going to try to do a few of these a week. So. It won't take too long for your questions to get answered. If it's an emergency, don't ask me here because you might not get your answer for a few weeks. Uh, first thing I got to say is I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. It's actually New Year's Day and I'm in here doing these videos right now. I got all day long, the store's closed, perfect time. Why not get right into it and knock a few of these videos out? So, I'm going to start off with Efren Jacquez. I'm not going to keep apologizing for saying people's names wrong. I don't know if I am or not. I'm going to try to do my best. If you have a name that's kind of confusing, maybe try to sound it out for me so I don't mess up uh, your names. I don't like saying people's names wrong. All right, so this will be a few personal questions for you, John. How did you get into the African cichlid hobby? What made you want to start breeding slash making it a business? And last, was Lisa always okay with your hobby? Or did you have to convince her to start liking the hobby? Great videos and keep up the good work, P.S. Uh, very shortly, I will be ordering from KG Tropicals. Cool. I like that. Can't wait. Um, I've already covered a lot of that recently um, as far as how I got into the hobby, but uh, what made us want to start making it into a business, it was something that Lisa and I came up with together. Um, don't get any wrong ideas, but we were actually in our bedroom one day because we had a couple fry tanks in there. It's kind of embarrassing, but that's the only place we had to put them. And we were sitting there watching the fry and going, ooh, ah, looking at the fry. And we said, you know, wouldn't this be cool to do this for a living? And that's where the, the fantasy started. And it kind of built from there. Um, and, you know, Lisa and I are both very ambitious people. Uh, I did not have to convince her uh, to do this as a business. In fact, we, we were both equally as excited to do this. And we're both equally invested. And we both put just as much time into this uh, and we have since the beginning, so it's never been a, a thing where I had to convince her um, or persuade her to, to get involved with this. She fell hard for the aquarium hobby, just like you have, and uh, I didn't have to do anything to convince her of that. So it was really cool. She's, I, I don't even want to say that she's been very supportive because it's not like I'm doing this and she's supporting me. We're both doing it together, so it's absolutely... Um, a match made in heaven when it comes to that and uh, and I'm very thankful for that um, so yeah I pretty much covered what you were asking there uh, as far as how we got into the African cichlid hobby we had cichlids accidentally breed and uh, and that kind of changes everything I talked about that a couple episodes ago um, so let's move on here James Delgado I have a good idea for a video I think it would be helpful for everyone to see a time-lapse style video of one specific breed of fish from egg all the way to free swimming fry all in the tumbler so we can see exactly how the eggs should bounce from day one to when they are ready to leave the tumbler. Not really a question but that's a really good suggestion. Um, I've actually I've kind of done that by way of photograph. Uh, it's on my website. If you go I don't think I deleted this page. I think it's still on there. There should be a button on the side of our website, www.kgtropicals.com, that has a how do we do it. I think it's still on there. And it's kind of a how we do things in our hatchery. Um, and I kind of have the, the photo timeline of, uh, of how the eggs develop. But that's a really good idea. And, um, and maybe I'll do that. It's, it's, a, it's a good idea. I like it. Thank you, James. Um, all right. See, this guy is smart. He helped me with pronouncing his name. Nelson Eusebio? I'm doing my best here. I'm a huge fan of your series. Thanks for all the updating with the new videos. I've gotten into the African cichlid hobby relatively recently and your videos are a big part of it. That's really cool. Kind of makes me feel like a celebrity. It's weird. <laughs> well, I've got a question for you and I hope it makes the cut into the video. Well, guess what? It did. Uh, what are the best mediums 
to use in a canister filter for cichlids. I know you have an FX5. No, I don't have an FX6 uh, on your 240. And was curious what you keep inside on a regular basis and how often do you change your media, filter floss, carbon, etc. Uh, what's the deal with carbon? Some people say it's essential, others say it's useless. All right, well, I've been around this hobby for a very long time. You look like a young guy in your picture, so I've probably been in this hobby as long as you've been alive. And so I'm an old school guy. Carbon is, is cool with me. I like it. Um, it helps out. There are some negatives about it, though, that, um, you know, the, the, a good argument could be made not to use carbon. Uh, I use it. I believe that it helps to keep odors down. And, I mean, in a place like this, that's critical. Uh, not all the tanks have carbon in it, by the way. Um, in your home, you know, you got a nice big tank in your living room. You don't want it stinking up. Carbon definitely helps with odors. Um, and it helps to kind of keep that crispness to the water, uh, keeping it nice and clear. Um, but again, you know, people will make the argument against carbon, and, and I'm not really going to argue with them. It's not something that I believe about enough or believe in enough to really make an argument. Uh, one of the downsides to carbon is that it, it only works for a short period of time, so it, it is something that you have to replace regularly. Uh, and it also completely neutralizes medications. So if you're using things like Melifix, Pemafix, uh, you know, some of your easier to find, um, readily available medications that you put in frequently, carbon will kind of cancel that out. So that's why all the instructions would tell you to remove the carbon before you th use those medications. Um, so I'm kind of answering all your questions at once. Yes, I do have carbon. Sorry, there's an email. I do have carbon in the 240 um, and you know I keep a good amount in there but I also have the um, the bio ceramic disc things that the FX6 came with I basically I haven't switched anything out of there except I have replaced the carbon so if you've watched my video of where I installed the FX6 it's all still the same um, it's just that I have replaced the carbon so uh, thank you for saying all those nice things Nelson and uh, I hope I answered your question the way you were looking. All right, Billy Bream. Hey, John, basically I went out and bought a tank and I used a quick start chemical and I added the fish the next day. My local fish store said, if I keep feeding to a minimum for the first month or so, everything would be fine, but I tested the water and I have a very high reading of nitrite. What should I do? The first thing you should do is not take advice from that local fish store anymore. Uh, anybody that would tell you that you can put fish in the next day is um, they don't know what they're talking about there are th stuff out there uh, there is products out there that will tell you you can instantly add fish I've done it and it's worked um, but I've heard way too many nightmare stories from customers to, to be able to say that that stuff works really well now I did a video talking about the fluval uh, cycle product and, I, and it's a great product, I believe in it wholeheartedly. But in that video, I did not tell you to put fish in right off the bat. And the reason is, it's just not ready yet. Uh, the tank does need to cycle. If you're gonna put a bunch of expensive fish in there the next day, uh, brother, your, your, your local fish store saw you coming <laughs> and they, uh, they, they sold you on a lie. Um, I don't know many people that would recommend putting fish in the next day other than people that are just trying to get money from you. Um, anybody who's responsible and, and knows the way this whole thing works would never recommend that. Um, again, you, there's just there's too many nightmare stories and I could make this video 30 minutes long talking about the disasters that can happen from putting in fish the day after. You have a very high reading of nitrite, what should you do? You should be doing a lot of water changes. Now. There's a, a good side and a downside to that. If you clean the tank too thoroughly, you're actually taking steps back because you're removing a lot of bacteria that could be beneficial to the, the, the completion of your tank cycle. Um, so really, what I tell people to do in, in this situation is don't vacuum the gravel out as much. Don't remove all of that bacteria. Just take out water. Take out 50% of the water, put in fresh water. That should help to keep the nitrites down enough to save your fish um, while you work your way through the cycle. But if you go in and you start thoroughly cleaning out the filters and you start really thoroughly cleaning out the gravel, you're kind of, like I said, 
you're taking a step forward, but you're taking two steps back. So definitely, uh, you know, try to control yourself when it comes to what you do. But if you don't do anything, your fish are all gonna die. Uh, nitrite will absolutely wipe out your tank. So you don't wanna mess with that. So keep the nitrite down by doing some water changes. Make sure you use some good conditioners. Maybe put some things, uh, put some Prime in there. Prime's a great product for neutralizing nitrate and nitrite. Um, so yeah, Seachem Prime, water changes, let the cycle finish, and don't get advice from that local pet store anymore. Um, that's the best advice you got in this whole video. Oh boy, Emily, Sarah, we got some pictures with this one. Hey John, so I have a Jalo Reef African Cichlid, weird name. Um, she put a whole bunch of names in here, it's, it's weird. Anyway, I think it's a she and she is very outgoing. She was very outgoing and would come to you when you walk by. But now she runs even if you make the smallest of movement on the other side of the room. She's been eating one or two pellets a day. I think she's holding, but I can't tell. There's, there is not a lot of change in her mouth region. I did a water change about a week ago and I saw the red zebra trying to mate with her but she just swam away, so I don't know if they did breed. I will post some pictures on Instagram. Rawr Lady 01, R-A-W-R Lady 01 on Instagram. Uh, so she's got some pictures in here, and, uh, and yeah, it doesn't, pictures are sideways. It doesn't necessarily look like the fish is holding, but that doesn't mean anything, because a lot of times, what you'll notice when the fish first spawn uh, their mouth will be huge and but what they do is they end up organizing them down in the cavity and they get things settled and so the 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 swelling of their throat and mouth does go down it goes down a lot and it's because the female gets them organized in there uh, so it's possible that she is holding um, I've made the argument several times in the past that I do not see fish females eat while they're holding uh, I have seen them try so if you see your fish going for food, but not necessarily getting it, um, it's possible that she's holding, but in your now picture of the fish, uh, she's got a before and after photo. The, the belly doesn't look sunken in. I mean, the females, if they've been holding for a long time, you start to see their bellies kind of shrink in, and uh, it's obvious that they haven't eaten in a long time. Looks like a healthy fish. She might just be shy and skittish, or she could be holding. Um, as far as what you can do about that, there's there's not really a whole lot. I mean, if that fish has decided that it's gonna be reclusive and, and not social, uh, you, you, can't, you can't really do anything about that. What you can do, uh, first of all, verify whether or not she's holding, even going to the extremes of netting her and opening her mouth. It, it doesn't hurt her. Uh, see what's going on in there. This message was sent on the 17th, so it's possible you've already figured out what's going on with this fish by now, but um, if you have it, if this is still going on, if you move your decor around a little bit, it can kind of snap her out of whatever little funk that she's in, um, and also verify whether or not she's holding. Might be that she is, and you might have some babies, so. Um, but the fish looks healthy. I mean, doesn't look sick or anything, so I, I don't know that I would worry too much. Uh, could be that your fish is just a loner. So. We are at 1336, that's gonna be long enough for today. I wanna to thank you all very much for watching this video. I'm gonna turn the camera off and I'm gonna do another one because I'm having fun. See this? See this email right there? Send your questions to that email address and you can get your questions answered on this series. Thank you all so much, for very, thank you all so very much for watching and we'll see you on episode eight.